Hey everybody, I decided to make this its own video because I thought it'd be like an important PSA about home lead paint test kits. Um, sodium rodinazate in particular because that's what I used and it seems to be the most common. Because as it turns out, whitewash will cause a false positive and I couldn't find any information about that anywhere online. And since whitewash is a common paint in old houses and old houses are where you would test the paint for lead, it seems really weird that there isn't any information about it. So to start out, I got this kit in the US at either Lowe's or Home Depot. They both had the same one. Um, one was a few dollars cheaper, so I got it there. It's probably Home Depot. It was like $17 after taxes, which isn't cheap. You can get it on Amazon for a lot cheaper, but it was all in like big quantities. I haven't seen any tests here. I even asked at some paint stores and they're like, no, nah, that's not, they don't, we don't have them. So that's why I brought this from the US. And I checked the water report from the municipality. Um, the lead amount is below the testing threshold. And my pipes are stainless steel and a little section that's still the old galvanized pipes, which could be contributing zinc. But I would think if the water was any issue, it would change color from being dipped in the water. So I don't think any of that is the issue. So I'll start with when I was testing and the positive results. And then afterwards, I'll explain what I found online and what I think caused the false positives. In a lot of the early videos, um, there's a lot of comments about lead paint, which is obvious since it's an old house. But since I knew all the walls were whitewash, I wasn't a concern, but I didn't think about all the wood being painted. So before I start sanding and taking this paint off, I do have a lead test, so I'll test it. And I'll go ahead and test the ceilings too, just to be safe. So the instructions say, dip it in water for one second, and then wait 10 seconds. And then I've got this area that I cleaned off and sanded a little bit, like it said, to rough it up. And then just rub a one centimeter area for 30 seconds. So it changed color, but it's not purple. Um, it still is orangish. So, especially in the light. It still looks orange. So that seems negative. So you could tell when I was rubbing it, it was turning purple. So that definitely is a positive, which is not good. So this one looks like it's all still orange. So that's a negative for the green paint. There is that little bit, which could be white paint underneath the green paint but I feel like it would have been more purple. So I figured I would just, cause I have a bunch of extra tests, just test the whitewash in the living room, which I was sure was whitewash, but it turned purple right away. So maybe it's not. But then I did this section that is, that's the whitewash I just did on top of just lime. Um, and it turned purple straight away. So I don't know what that means. So like I said, I couldn't really find a whole lot of information online. The most useful stuff was comments and blog posts and Reddit, which which is not really the type of sources I would want to base my info off of. But I'll explain what I kind of pieced together from those and some research papers I found and stuff. Pretty much all the research papers were police related. Sodium rodinazate is what they used to test for gunshot residue. So that is where all the research was. So what I learned is a lot of different metals will actually cause it to change color. Most of them will be like a reddish brown, which seems kind of in this range, which if you're looking at this would be positive. In particular, I saw a lot of people 
that test ca- old cast iron and it changes color so they think it's positive but it's because the actual iron itself causes that reaction so there probably are a lot of heirloom cast iron products that were needlessly thrown away and there are lots of other metals that cause a color change mostly kind of in this middle gradient area um so it can be hard to differentiate if it's a positive or not and i did realize especially the lighting has a lot to do with how well you can see what the actual color is and and even the camera wasn't really showing the color that i was seeing like so i think it can be really hard to differentiate if a color change is actually far enough to be a positive or not and so while that might not sound very ideal for the average person that might only use it once or twice in their life the reason that it is still so common is that the rate of false negatives is almost non-existent so if it does show up as a negative then you can be pretty sure that it's negative and if it does show up as positive, then you would do another sort of test essentially to verify that it's positive. So what I learned from the research papers is that a lot of different metals will form compounds with the sodium odinazate, which is what causes the color change. But in an acidic solution, those compounds are clear. So what the police labs will do is they'll dip the swab in an acidic solution. And if it stays purple, that's lead. And if it changes back to yellow, then, that, then it's something else and not lead. So that's why I did using vinegar, and all the swabs that were positive instantly turned back to yellow, meaning that it wasn't lead and it was just a false positive. So what I couldn't find anywhere would be why the whitewash caused such a significant false positive, like it turned purple instantly. The only thing even closely related was was a random comment on a random blog about pH and how like in high school you do that red cabbage test and it the changes colors with different pH. And so just to extrapolate that with the research papers and stuff, maybe since an acidic solution turns it back to yellow, a basic solution, which whitewash is basic, would change its colors. I have no idea why I would do that. I couldn't find any reasoning for why I would do that. That's just a total guess, but I have no other explanation because even the whitewash that I had just painted on that I made myself, so I knew there was nothing extra in it, so it instantly turned purple. And actually the fresher it was, the faster it turned purple. So. So I think it would be something to do with it having a high pH. So if anybody does actually know anything about that, I would really like to know. But what I find weird is that since whitewash does cause an instant false positive, and whitewash is a common form of paint in old houses, and old houses are what you would test for lead paint in, it is really weird that there's no warning on the package or really anywhere that I could find that says whitewash can cause a false positive. So that's kind of why I wanted to make this video to put that information out there and hopefully someone with more knowledge can extrapolate on that and hopefully save somebody a bunch of stress and money trying to remediate something that they don't need to actually worry about. And if you're not sure if you have whitewash or not, you can drip a little vinegar on it and if it bubbles, then it's whitewash. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps somebody and I'll see y'all next time. Ciao. So sodium rodiz so sodium rodiz sodium rodinizate rodi sodium rodinizate